In this guide for the Foundry, we're going to be looking at the Settings page. The Settings page is found by clicking on the Settings tab that's located beneath the Template button. In this page, you're able to select things like the voice output routing, some master control assignments, some randomization locks, uh, how the morph pad's controlled, some master faders, and then all of the global parameters uh, that are contained within Foundry. Very first thing I want to take a look at is the output routing capabilities within the Foundry. Each individual voice can be routed out a separate audio channel within Contact. Contact is considered a multi timbral instrument program, which means that in your DAW of choice, whether it be Logic, Cubase, Pro Tools, Digital Performer, Cakewalk, whatever you're using that allows for multi timbral outputs, I can route each individual voice tab to a separate audio track within my DAW. To do that, you have to add in some form of an output routing uh, channel structure within Contact. Now, by default, I personally have a four channel stereo output routing configuration. You can have something like four surround channels, you can have two stereo channels if you wish, or the default, which is just one. You can add channels here in contact by simply clicking the Add Channels button and then increasing the number of tracks that you want. Two is a stereo configuration, six would be for the surround configuration and then you can select what uh what output you want it to start from and have it ascending you can delete the current existing ones as well as make it my default configuration since i already have this configuration set up we're just going to use the configuration that i already have now whenever you add a new configuration you will have to reload the foundry or any other contact instance for it to apply um, all of these um, outputs so after you have your output routing configuration set up, you can click on the drop-down menu below each of the voices and select a specific output for each of the voice tabs to go to. Now again, this is a very advanced um, way of working with the Foundry, but I wanted to show you the option just in case you were curious. So now you can see I have my big effect going through the first channel. I have my percussive effect going through my second one. My pulsing pad going through my third. And my texture going to my fourth. This way in my DAW I can apply uh, individual delays or a specific type of reverb or compressor if I don't want to use contacts internal um, effects that we have applied to the instrument. One thing to note, as soon as you start routing individual tabs to a specific output, you are going to be bypassing the master effects. That's just the nature of how this works. So please be aware any delay, chorus, reverb, flanger, or phaser that you have on the master setting won't be able to go through these individual stereo effects. The next segment is under this master controller assignment. We have round robins, so you, these can be turned on and off. A round robin is a cycle set of samples that play back whenever you trigger the same note. Uh, this is very useful for the effects and rhythmics that we've included, so that way the sounds don't sound so static when you play the same note over and over and over again. It's just a varying or an alternating uh, sound that happens when you press that round robin. So if you're finding some of those alternations annoying, you can just uncheck that button and the round robins will go away. The mono glide time is only based currently on the sequencer. So whenever you add in this kind of glide slash uh, legato functionality on the steps, this value right here, this mono glide time value, will change the actual value of how wide something will jump to it. So let's go ahead and hear what that would sound like. Right now I'm gonna set my mono glide time to its smallest value, and I'm gonna go in and take a listen to this pad that I have. I'll turn on the sequencer, and there's no glides on this whatsoever right now. I'm gonna add a glide back. Increase my glide time. And 
so it kind of adds in a little bit of that pitch bendiness. The master filter CC is just an assignable parameter that allows you to control the overall filter of the entire instrument. This is just a low pass filter. It just it makes it more dull sounding. So here's it with it all the way up using the mod wheel, which is its current assignment, CC1. So you can see there that the mod wheel was moving up and down as I was playing back that sound. That's entirely what this is. To change this parameter, you can go all the way up to value 30 or all the way down to value 1 just by clicking and dragging on it. You cannot double click and change the value, however. You just have to turn this all the way up and down. If you're having a hard time getting in on a specific value, just hold down shift and you can get a little bit finer resolution. We do not recommend setting this number to any of these two numbers or this number or CC 11 or 7. So try to not keep it 1, 9, 2, 4, 11, or 7. Otherwise, you may start running into other issues. The effects randomizing, sequencing randomization, and LFO randomization can all be locked. What this means is when I uh, lock my effects randomization, whenever I use the AARE page, whenever I randomize, it will keep all of my effects, this other than filter, it will keep all of my effects and will not randomize any of these parameters uh, within that randomization. The only thing it will change is filter because filter has some other aspects to the sound that you may need to get randomized depending on what sound set you're trying to pull up. The sequencer randomizing lock operates the exact same way the effects randomizing lock operates, whereas when you have locked the sequence, it won't change when you're in this randomization. So let me go ahead and show you this. If I go ahead and randomize a rhythmic patch. Notice it's not changing at all. Randomize again. Again, not changing. But if I go here and turn off that lock and go ahead and randomize again, you can see that is changing. The LFO randomizing lock, again, operates the same way that sequencer randomizing and the effects randomizing works, whereas it will lock whatever parameters you have set for LFO, step, or envelope, and won't ever change them based upon the main randomization here. Be aware when you do have the LFO randomizing lock on and you do want to do some more randomization, there will some, be some things that may not work properly because of some of the LFOs we are doing to the particular instrument. We recommend having this off. The default is having the sequencer randomizing lock on, but the effects in the LFO randomizing lock off. Finally, we have the master randomizing CC value. This is a static value, it's not something you're able to change. It's currently set to 9, so whenever you send a CC value of 9, it will effectively be the same as pressing this randomize button here, or likewise the randomizing button here on the front page. It's the same button, but it will essentially go through and start randomizing um, just by moving or hitting a CC value. So we recommend setting this up on some kind of touchpad, or if you have a, a touch OSC or one of the other iPad functionalities, you can go ahead and just press that, make that button value equal nine. And whenever you press that button, it will change the sound. Then we have our Morthpad CC values. Again, these can be assigned all the way up to 30. And as default, we have them set to two and four. And that will change this controller on here. Let me show you. We recommend using these if you are using a DAW and not trying to do a performance morph. We recommend just using these with your DAW and recording that in. Then finally, we have the master fader. This is a bit of a pre-fader, so it will not affect the delay, chorus, reverb, flanger, and phaser. 
whereas this one will. So this is kind of your master fader. This one's more of a pre-fader. It's basically changing the volume overall uh, across all four voice tabs. The reason why we have this in is once you start setting each voice tab to an individual stereo output, this will not apply anymore, but this will. So if you're having some issues with volume and having issues controlling volume using CC7, go ahead and reassign this master fader to CC7 if you are ignoring this fader, meaning that you have these routed to different outputs. Again, this is more of a pro tip, and if you're using this in the default configuration, you won't need to worry about this. Just worry about this. Finally, we have our global LFO and other modulator parameters. The Foundry has three different LFOs. These can be independently assigned to any of the four possible morphing assignments within each of the four voices. We have pitch, volume, pan, and filter that can be applied. So if you look here on the filter page, you can drop down and assign LFO or step. You can also do this in the panner button as well. And then globally to volume and pitch. So for example, what that would sound like, let's go ahead and just turn on filter to the LFO. Now notice when I press the power, my step lights went off. One thing to note, LFO and step cannot be on at the same time. Uh, it's a uh, engine conflict within, within contact. Um, and to make it simpler, we just have them toggle back and forth. So this is not a bug turning on step and turn, it will automatically turn off uh, LFO. So there's no uh, conflicts within the engine. So let's go ahead and take a listen as to what this LFO sounds like. Now, just by turning on the filter doesn't necessarily turn on the filter for the actual voice. So be aware if you're pressing it and you're not hearing any kind of LFO functionality whatsoever, there could be two things that happen. One is the filter was not turned on to begin with. It may not be assigned to LFO and your cutoff value may not be actually applied. So now, so essentially what the filter is doing is it's just modulating this cutoff value. So an LFO stands for low frequency oscillator, which means it operates on a much lower frequency than that of an actual um, synthesizer style uh, oscillator generator. We just call it LFO for low frequency oscillations. You can set the frequency of that oscillation through this frequency knob and notice again, it's in value of 30 second notes. So four 30 second notes is an eighth note, eight 30 second notes is a quarter note, um, and this is tempo synced. One thing to note is you always do want to check this frequency whenever you're pulling up any value to make sure that it is assigned to a proper LFO time. We also have intensity. Intensity is the value at which. So if you notice when I bring up the intensity, it's essentially pulling this value all the way down. So if my intensity is at zero, it's not doing, it's not modulating this at all. Whereas my int intensity is at 50%, it's probably just modulating it like this. Where if my intensity is at 100%, it'll be modulating it all the way. So think of intensity as the minimum value. The maximum value would be set from this cutoff. So if my maximum value is here and my intensity is all the way up, it would be alternating between these two. We have other things besides just sine wave. We have the rectangle wave. Rectangle wave sounds like this. It's kind of a pulse wave. And you can change that pulse width. Next is the triangle wave. And to, again, to turn it all the way off, you just pull it all the way down. You turn it all the way up and it will activate the triangle wave. The triangle wave is a little different than that of a sine wave. The triangle wave has a pointed top, where the sine wave has a rounded top. So if you can hear that. 
A saw wave is has this type of shape. And finally, we have the random wave. You can hear the random wave a little bit better on the pitch. It's what is considered sample. It just picks a random thing and then holds it, and picks a new thing and then holds it. So you get this kind of random, more chaotic movements. We also have templates set up, so you can quickly choose a sine wave, or quickly cho choose a triangle wave, sawtooth wave, or rectangle wave. And make sure again to set your frequency here whenever you apply a template, so that way you know exactly what it's syncing to. Next is step. So the step control operates very similar to that of the LFO. Each step here is a value, positive and negative. You can draw in values if you want. And develop some very unique sounding. Or apply it to a pan so you can get some cool. Or you can pull from one of our several templates here. Again, we have an intensity knob and an invert knob um, that you can apply. The envelope controls are similar to that of the envelope in the master uh, amplitude that we have. And yes, you can apply uh, amplitude or volume to another envelope. It may conflict a bit with this, so just be careful with what you're doing. But the handy thing for envelope controls is stuff like rises and drops. So if I wanted like a five second drop, or a power down or a spin down, you can do that. And what's happening is that the, um, the decay is happening over this long period of time and pushing the pitch down. Can invert that and now it becomes a rise. Or I can make it kind of hump a bit and go down and make it come back up. Or vice versa. So we really like using these for pitch, but of course you can apply this to pan so you can do a nice long left right pan and there are three separate envelope controls that you are able to apply. Please note that there might be some issues with the release. If this release value is not set to the same as the release value you are applying to it on your envelope modulator, you may run into some issues. So try to keep your release values similar to that of the master release for the each individual instrument that you've applied to it. So let's take a look at our master effects controls. These individual delay, chorus, reverb, flanger, and phaser are master effects for the entire instrument. We're able to send all of this value, every parameter, all of uh, you know, the filters and grainers and stuff, to a master effects individually per voice. We already showed this to you on the sends page, but this sends the volume of a particular voice tab to the master effect. And then the master effect volume is on the performance page, and that's these guys. Now again, you can access quickly um, like the reverbs or the delays just by holding down shift from the performance page, and that will take you to the settings page and click on reverb. So that way, instead of having to be here on the performance page and go to settings and then to reverb and start messing around with things, you can do it directly from the performance page and just shift click on reverb. Go back to the performance page, shift click on delay, go back to the performance page, flanger, etc. So let's go ahead and look at the delay controls. You have your, of course, your timing controls, how 
fast each little delay segment happens after the next one. Again, listed in values of 30 seconds, so for 30 seconds is a eighth note. The dampening controls allows for a low pass filter to be applied to each uh, essentially delay or reflection. Pan allows for ping pong, so it goes back and forth, back and forth, and feedback is how many uh, delay reflections exist. Chorus, standard controls, mount, speed, and delay. Reverb, we have several different impulse responses that we've recorded in many different spaces. We've got a couple of plates, we've got some bedrooms, we've got some caves we recorded, uh, even recorded some impulses at a swamp, um, did some weird kind of effecty stutter effects, um, all very, very interesting. Uh, but the one that comes standard is the uh, reverb that I designed that I felt was kind of best overall for most of the instruments within the foundry. And finally, the last two are flanger and phaser. And just like with chorus, these are very, very standard plugins that allow you to manipulate the sound a little bit further. And we wanted to give you those uh, sounds as options uh, within the foundry. That's it for the settings tab. Be sure to check out our other videos on the AARE randomization engine, uh, which dealt with the template page, the performance pages, and then also our um, individual voice tab pages. <laughs>